can actually. Oh yeah, yeah, we can. Hold on, let me get plugged in here. Okay, we're good. All right. All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. It's 4:30 p.m. This is July 29th. <clears throat> we're on the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. This is a work session tonight, so. Uh, for extra conversation, we, we will invite you. Uh, otherwise, we appreciate your uh, your patience with us tonight. And hello to those of you there at home. All right, we'll have mayor's award starting off. <clears throat> Second, number two, is a public hearing consideration of a sale of a, a portion of property located south of the property located locally known as 1220 Mount Pleasant Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. Mr. Tesla. Uh, this is. Uh, somewhat excess land adjacent to uh, Mount Pleasant Street on uh, Mount Pleasant Street Bridge that uh, Roberts Tire has been using and kind of through the bridge project have realized it uh, has been owned by the city. Uh, so looking to sell this uh, land um, to Roberts Tire who owns the property to the north. Uh, it's 0.21 acres. Uh, there is a storm e or a sewer easement over the majority of the property so there's not much uh, value in being able to build on the property, but they do use it for storage and is valuable to them in that sense. Um, but is uh, again Jason to Mount Pleasant Street, just south of their property, and um, would go to Roberts Tire and be combined with a lot to the north with transfer by quick claim deed uh, for $750. Okay. Council, you guys good with that? Good with yes. that. I'm groovy with it. Number three is a resolution awarding bid for the 2019 Dankwart Park Pool Improvement Project. Uh, who's coming first, Mr. Teslin? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so we got bids for this project on July 23rd. I uh, received uh, three bids for the project. Uh, 511167 was the low bid by By Street Contracting uh, from West Burlington. Um, this is making improvements to the pool uh, property, which is owned by the city. Um, for year-round use of the pool uh, by Lisi, which the city currently has a lease with most LLC to operate the pool in the city's off-season. Uh, they would put up the dome in the, uh, after the end of the city's uh, summer season uh, and then operate it uh, privately through most LLC. Uh, they'd be responsible for staffing, paying utilities, and operating the pool during that time. Um, looking to start the project August 26th, the day after uh, the city, uh, city's last day is August 25th, uh, with completion in November 2019. Um, I guess a couple of questions. The city will continue to operate it in the summer without the dome. Uh, it will be in open air uh, swimming as it normally has uh, throughout the summer, um, but would have the ability to put up the dome uh, in the winter season. Uh, some of the improvements to the pool include a new pool deck, um, some drainage, uh, fencing, uh, improvements to the pool house uh, to condition it for year-round use. It's a, a block building without any uh, conditioning currently or insulation, so uh, that covers a lot of it. And then there are kind of external or uh, secondary features, adding a storage shed for storage of the um, dome and uh, different units uh, associated with their um, pool and adding air handling units. Uh, um, the actual bubble is a separate purchase uh, that is owned by the swim club. Um, so this is just improvements to the actual pool house or pool property. Uh, this will be uh, run through the city as a city project since it's an improvement to our facility, uh, but it is uh, paid for by the swim club. Uh, did confirm with US Bank, they do have funds available for the project and the amount of the project plus a 10% contingency. Um, the city would request funds through the swim club as a loan from U.S. Bank for payment of the project. Um, so the city does not have any funds budgeted for the project. Any unexpected or unknown items will need to be covered by the swim club and the contingency fund. The Iowa Department of Public Health is required to approve the project as well. Uh, plans have been sent for them and awaiting approval. Uh, this approval would be needed prior to entering in the contract and starting work on the project. Uh, one item uh, at the end of the memo uh, that we've talked about previously is the pool heater. Uh, have had issues uh, throughout the season on that and would um, recommend that uh, some replacement of that heater before operating in the winter. Just concern over failing uh, during the winter is a little different than during the summer. Uh, we do not necessarily need the pool heater during the summer. There's a lot of pools that don't operate with a heater, but it is absolutely uh, critical for uh, year-round use of the pool. But 
Um, that's something that uh, we'll have to have further discussion on, but it is approximately $30,000 in cost uh, for that replacement. What was our discussion on that ahead of time? Was that a, a were we doing a pro rata share on those items or, or how was that written in the contract? In the lease agreement, it just says any item over $10,000 needs to have discussion with the leasee. Um, I guess swim club would be associated with that and figured out how to proceed with that. I think there was discussion whether it is a 50-50 split or based on use or uh, kind of is a case-by-case -case basis on the item, but um, just in the lease, it says it ha a discussion has to occur for anything over $10,000 uh, cost between the leasee and the city on how to proceed with that. So we've started, they're aware of it, uh, started some discussions with the sw swim club and okay. um, so that they, they're aware and we'll, we'll have to proceed in some manner uh, prior to operation of the pool in November. I don't know if you guys have any comments or... It's not perfect, but I, I'm satisfied. As long as we can keep Mr. Freeland out of uh, negotiations, I won't deal with him. But <clears throat> where did we stand with bank back, backing on this? I did confirm with uh, Wood Storts at U.S. Bank that they do have uh, funds available for the 511,000 and a 10% conting contingency on hand uh, for that, and did receive a confirmation email from them. We good? So, <clears throat> well, so when. It, this pool heater issue, when are we going to talk about it? Do you guys have any thoughts or input on that? Because it would seem to me we need to yeah. address that now. Tonight? Or, yeah, huh? Like tonight? Or? No, I just we need to talk about it. We're going to go accept, accept this, which seems to me like it's the right thing to do. But I don't want to head into the winter with, you know, done all the work for the pool to, and then we don't have a pool what do, you, what do you want result. John well I mean are we we need to I think we need to put this where do we get the funds for it I, I guess it depends on how this gets split up we don't know I mean we've got our bids but of course things change as the project goes on mm -hmm. so I, I guess we'd feel more comfortable talking about contributing to that if we knew what our final costs were for the construction project okay. itself but if things I'm not, I don't think we're saying we will or will not contribute to it, but we did, we did when we set up that lease. The lease is front loaded going back to you guys so that to help cover that. Now it's not going to be there before. That's what I thought I recall. Yeah, everything was coming to you first up to, I think it was 15,000, the first 15,000. Is more than that. I'd have is to it? Look back at that. Yeah. It's it's something along those lines, but that all came to you first before we started getting our portion. Now, first that's months. not going to be there yeah. before the first winter. So yeah, I mean that's going to have to be juggled there some, but um, but we, it's very possible that we would have some to contribute towards that. Okay. We just don't know what, how yeah. much if you know, all those things yet. So you, I know that the bank is backed the 500 some thousand that we have for this portion where are you at for the overall cost of the project i think you're a little over 800,000 yeah we're yeah we're actually i just i just looked at we're it we're close enough that the bank is comfortable yeah. with what the we're doing the bank's comfortable with it i have, yeah, yeah we're we're ready to we're ready to order the bubble but we don't want to do that until we have council approval for the project so are you, would the, it be the safe other thing to is, we really don't you're... know the cost on the heater yet. I don't think is any, I, I don't think anybody's nailed down an actual cost yet. Uh, for the replacement of the same, I just talked to Brad before the meeting was around thirty thousand. He felt comfortable for a repeater system. It was sixty to eighty thousand, which Ooh. we would not for the multiple heater. It was. Yeah. I was going to say he was looking into a multiple we heater. So need that for our operation if you yeah. guys wanted it. But it that's to be a, a lot more efficient to even consider that. Yeah. yeah. You're. I think. My understanding was you you have you're in a position to be able to move forward with all components of Correct. this, mm -hmm. but it's it, you are tight with where your financing we, is currently. We are. We we're, are we're, we're continuing to fundraise. Yes. Yeah. So I think that is to your point. We need. It, I under there is some level of how how are you going to address an an issue that's another piece of funding that's above and beyond that, and how would that be split and what that that is something that's worthwhile needing to. To talk through yeah we just need to nail that down i think mm -hmm. and it may not be that you get it done at this at with this, this point, one but, but okay yeah. all right satisfied john yeah mpt very good thanks for the work gentlemen
Number four is a resolution awarding contract for the 2019 Seal Coach Street Resurfacing Project. Mr. McGregor. Good evening. Uh, we did some bid openings last Tuesday, uh, of which the seal coat was one. Uh, this seal coat project includes uh, a more major portions of Louisa and Denmark. There's some smaller uh, sections of other roadways. Uh, the estimate was 295,000. Uh, we had a low bid from pro paving at 274,471. Uh, this is the first time we've worked with this contractor on this pro uh, project. So. Um, we uh, everything checks out, so we are uh, we recommend approval of this contract with Pro Paving. You guys, we good? Sounds good. The road use tax to fund it. So. Okay. Number five is a resolution awarding contract for the 2019 HMA Street resurfacing project. Uh, this was uh, one of the other ones that we opened up last week. Uh, the HMA project was estimated at 697 thousand and includes. Uh, Several different streets in the North Hill area, uh, 7th, 8th, North Street, Franklin, um, and then there's a portion of Agency Street uh, between Shields and Curran, the furthest south, bound, or furthest south lane uh, eastbound uh, is in pretty rough shape, so we would take some of that section out. Uh, the low bidder was W.L. Miller at $731,000. Uh, the funding for this is GO, uh, uh, general obligation loan money. Uh, we the other project that comes out of this source is the Aspen and Dill project. Uh, we originally had had the Harrison Street project in there, but kind of re-shifted uh, things around uh, for available monies. Um, the W.L. Miller looks to get this done yet this fall. I think that's probably our, was our concern, just the duration of what the project would take. Uh, the project should go a little bit quicker uh, with the ADA not included in this fall's work, but something that we would look at doing next spring. Um, so it would just be a you know, you know, kind of a mill and fill type project with none of the ADA. So uh, we would recommend moving forward. It's a little over um, kind of our estimate, but uh, you, know, you can see that we had three competitors there, and it's uh, kind of the nature of this work. We our asphalt prices always shift. We don't do a ton of it, so it uh, it's kind of a guessing game on estimating. Guys, good. Yeah, it's not that far over. It is over, but it's not that far. And you still have money on the fund, according to the note, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Number six is a resolution awarding contract for the 2019 ADA improvements. Uh, this was uh, one of the last ones that we did last week. Uh, this project has kind of been one that we've tossed around. Just it's been a difficult one to do. Not a lot of people were interested in it early on. We didn't receive any bids, as you remember. I think we did this back in late May or early June, uh, and then we took it and we, I, we, we par pared it down and we went out and quoted, but the quoting pricing was uh, more than we were allowed to per state code. Uh, so we put the project back together and put it out to bid. We had one bidder uh, in the amount of $153,000. Uh, the engineer's estimate was $87,000. Um, after talking with Jesse, we looked at the bid tab. Uh, the biggest thing that we noticed was, was um, I don't say out of line, but way higher than we expected, was the traffic control. There was a, a push button, solar powered uh, push button crossing, um, and that is for 49,500. Um, after talking with Jesse, we we think that maybe we could take that out, award contract for the full amount, and then do a deduction to reduce that out of the the installation of that project. The big reason why this project needs to be completed is the Mount Pleasant Street Bridge uh, for sidewalk mm -hmm. work and ADA compliance uh, rather than put it with the bridge work which would would have required prevailing wages to be affected which has affected you know the, the Locust Street project and the other Mount Pleasant Street work you know 15 to 20 percent on some of the work so we we decided then to try and pair this out and do it as a separate project so it is necessary to complete it um, per the DOT they'd like to have it done by the time that the, the bridge project is closed out um, I don't know when that will happen specifically, but um, I would like to keep this on the agenda uh, and talk more with Jesse here in the next couple days on whether the, the bid is quite a bit higher than what we had planned. Um, but I think that that traffic control part coming out is a huge, would affect that greatly. I don't know that it's necessary. Um, 
but that brings it down closer to 100 it's at 103,000 and with some change so not that much more than what he had estimated but you're taking a pretty good chunk of what was probably a weird part of his original estimate out of that so I still wonder about the ability to uh, just change your scope and do a project next spring award over the winter and maybe get a little bit more interest in it I don't but I don't I know you have to offset that with what you need to do for DOT I think that's my biggest concern is is the DOT gets uh, fussy with not getting this sidewalk work done in the time frame that the bridge project has happened this contractor is not gonna have a problem to take that solar unit out you don't think? <sighs> no I, I think that was part of the reason why the price was so high is just because it's kind of a pain to deal with okay so um, I, I don't I do agree Jim that you know if we were to do the ADA project we could change the scope um, and add it on to the asphalt project ADA work that we're not going to do this mm -hmm. fall you know, and pair them out and bid them over the winter and get that to start next spring I think that's a possibility but let me let me talk with Jim about it or Jim Jesse about it and uh, okay. give you kind of a recommendation next week he was good okay <clears throat> Number seven still is the What's that? Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. You started it. No, I said still you while well, you were reading. I was oh, waiting for you. All right. Still him. Resolution warning contract for the 2018 Front Street Hawkeye Arch Sewer Repair Project. Mr. McGregor. Uh, this project actually did not let last Tuesday. It'll let tomorrow. Uh, we, we had some pre-bid meetings that were contingent upon for contractors so they could actually bid on the project um, at that we we heard that uh, they wanted a little extra time to take a look at the project um, I want to get the project bid and under contract so we don't miss a window this fall if we have a, a potentially low river level but as you remember the, the big change with this project was the sheet pile wall um, and then kind of the way it was bid versus a you know a unit price versus lump sum so it'll bid tomorrow um, I'll have this I'll have that information for you in the packet and then I will talk about it next week okay We're good yep thank you sir uh, brings us to the proposed consent uh, number one is a resolution approving distance abatements for various properties We're good Number two is a resolution approving refund of beer license for Casey's Marketing Company, doing business as Casey's General Store, number 2342. Good. Number three, resolution approving a refund of beer license for Casey's Marketing Company, doing business as Casey's General Store, number 2346. Good. Number four is a resolution approving final acceptance, final payment, and release of retention monies for the 2018 Agency Street <coughs> Whitening Project, East End, Mr. McGregor. Uh, <clears throat> the agency project east of uh, Roosevelt uh, is completed and we're uh, going through the motions here with this resolution to close out the project um, it was bid out at 1.93 million um, there was some change orders in there uh, for 107,000 quantity deduction of 4,000 uh, bringing the total as-built costs of the roadway uh, there is some inspection and engineering costs that aren't shown here. Uh, we actually hired this project out from Veenster and Kim. They did the inspection work on us. There was some internal monitoring on it, so I want, I'm going to update this for you before next week to show you kind of the true cost of what this overall project really truly costs us. Um, it'll, be, it'll be a little bit larger than that. Um, uh, this project was funded, though, from... Uh, a TSIP or a traffic safety improvement grant for high five hundred thousand dollars to update the traffic lights there. Uh, the rest is funded through tax increment finance. And I think we're using some geo funds that were left over in the account uh, from the previous year. So on along yeah, with that, we have Agency Street East, West, um, Mount Pleasant Street Bridge, and Central Street uh, overpass work. Uh, are all are four different accounts that were funded with TIF funds and as we close out those projects we'll where there's any surplus because a couple of them came in a little under uh, we'll use those to offset some of the, the shortfalls and in, in the others this is notably one that has a, a little bit of a shortfall I think Central Street overpass also had a shortfall on it um, whatever doesn't get covered out of that uh, is either will either be in road use tax or out of your uh, miss your your 
large borrowing that you do for at your main overlay projects. And we can do either way, but kind of need to see where we close out at the end of it as we juggle the TIF funds around between those those accounts that we'd funded with that piece. We need close out on all four of them to know where our final shortfall amount's going to be, but there will be one. This is this is three of four, though. The bridge will be the last remaining. Yep. And, and unfortunately, that one may take a minute. It's going to take a little bit. There, there may be some, some legal actions that are pending on that, so um, that one may be a while until that one gets finally closed out. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you, sir. And number five is a resolution approving 28E agreement between the City of Burlington, Iowa, and Henderson County, Illinois for ambulance service to portions of Henderson County, Illinois. Chief. All right. This is a brand new agreement. I, I talked about it maybe a month ago that I was going to Henderson County with this agreement. So, again, just to go over kind of how we uh, do ambulance service over in Illinois, we primarily do ALS tiers or advanced life support where they have a basic life support ambulance. They call us. We meet up on the side of the road. We hop in the back of their ambulance, continue on to wherever, whatever hospital, and we bill the ambulance service for that $300. Uh, that's fairly typical across the state, somewhere in that range. What this agreement is for is the, the other calls where we're the primary service or about half of those times we get called over there as the, the primary service, we actually get disregarded. However, we get disregarded when we're almost to Aquaca or Stronghurst or somewhere. So it's quite a right. time commitment where we're just turned around, coming back, and there's no revenue. So this that's what this agreement's for. Uh, it's set at $4 per capita where the CTAA was at starting at 5 then goes to 6 and 7 at the top. So we just took the top and went just a little more than 50% of that because we're not promising to be their primary service. Right. We're in here on the agreement in number one, it says we're agreeing to be their secondary service. So they page out the primary or responsible ambulance service. If they don't get a response, then they page BFD to go over and take those calls. So we're just there to make sure somebody is responding to these calls in a timely manner. Um, this agreement will at four dollars per capita somewhere around twenty eight thousand a year is what they'll pay us for that service and then every time we do transport a patient in our ambulance we also bill the patient so we do when we get when we go over there actually tr treat and transport a patient we do get reimbursed a, a pretty good rate for those calls but like i said that's about half of the calls just a little i looked at last year we took 261 calls in henderson county Year to date, we're at 154 calls in Henderson County. So somewhere in that same, should end up at the same yeah. amount. Okay. You guys good? They've yeah. already voted and approved the, the Okay. Good job. Could you, while you're there, mm -hmm. ground emergency medical transport, that's a big piece of uh, funding in the general fund that hasn't been there before uh, for this new fiscal year kind of where does that stand or do you know every indication is that it's it started july 1st is we're going to be able to go back to july 1st and uh, collect a little more you know have a little better reimbursement for medicaid patients uh, however all the the final paperwork's not been done by the state so we're not able to uh, submit for the higher claim amounts. Right now, we we get about one hundred and twenty dollars for a Medicaid patient, and we're running around twenty percent of our calls are Medicaid patients. So, one hundred and twenty versus a nor uh, say Blue Cross in the six to seven hundred dollar mm -hmm. range. So we're losing quite losing. I mean, we're we don't get reimbursed at that same rate. GEMT will at least even up that amount. It'll make up the difference there, so. It could be huge. Could be, yeah. Well, depending on what happens with that, that's a huge swing in what our, how we do for budget this year. Mm -hmm. We put in 250,000 as anticipated revenues. Uh, if that doesn't get implemented and, and started, uh, we have a major shortfall mm -hmm. in this budget. Mm -hmm. However, if it gets implemented and they reimburse back to beginning July 1, we may have a, actually a little bit more revenue than what we have budgeted. Yeah. It's just, it's that's a major unknown in this budget, 
how this proceeds. Everything looks on, on pace to be okay, but when it doesn't start when it's supposed to, you don't know exactly where it does end up. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. All right, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Number six is resolution approving professional services agreement, services agreement with HR Green Inc. of Cedar Rapids, Iowa for general consulting services for the Burlington, Iowa Wastewater Treatment Facility for the period of July 1st. 2019 to June 30th, 2020. Don? Um, it's pretty much covered in the uh, memo that I put together. Um, it's a renewal, basically, of an annual uh, agreement that uh, allows us to contact HR Green and ask some questions about this process or that process or how we go about doing something and seeking professional uh, replies to those questions that we have and uh, they're very familiar with our facility they've been working with us for a lot of years and so we think that uh, the familiarity and the working relationship that we've developed over the years is beneficial to us when we seek information or replies to questions that we have questions Sounds good to me. It's in the budget, right? Yes, sir. And you've used them before, so let's yes. go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Number seven is a resolution approving amendment between CWA Local 7176 and City of Burlington. Chief. Uh, good evening. This is an agreement uh, for the evidence specialist position in our department. Uh, it's a part-time position, uh, 28 hours a week. Uh, this conversation came about uh, when we found us in need of hiring an evidence specialist and we found uh, the previous person that we had hired <clears throat> didn't uh, quite meet the standards that we needed so we did some uh, background uh, with other uh, municipal agencies here in the state of Iowa that are about the same size comparable to us and we found our, our rate of pay was a little bit uh, too low, quite a bit low uh, in order to uh, employ somebody that's going to meet those qualifications and do that kind of work uh, that we're expecting of them. It's quite detailed when you talk about evidence uh, coming into the department, property coming in, and then uh, maintaining that property and then disposition of it. And we're talking about not just uh, tangible property, but digital property uh, when we're talking about uh, video and audio. And we're, we receive quite a bit of it. Uh, and. Uh, the need for expertise in that area is, uh, is I guess, something that it's difficult for us to find that kind of expertise and somebody to meet those qualifications. Uh, initially, I started talking with uh, Jim about maybe moving that to a full-time position. A lot of agencies that are comparable to us do have it as full-time with benefits, and uh, definitely uh, there's some times when that person is definitely working that 28 hours a week from start to finish. Uh, to try to fulfill all the obligations that we expect in the evidence uh, room and handling of that property. Uh, along with that, we have, uh, at times, we seize uh, currency uh, in regards to investigations that may be obtained illegally and ask for forfeitures in there, and that process becomes lengthy, and, and the, legal, the legality of it is quite difficult to manipulate or, to, I guess, to... Uh, go through when it comes to the court system and the county attorney's office and where that property goes and, and how it's uh, taken care of. There's a lot of legal matters and, and uh, law that's uh, with that that needs to be understood by this person. <clears throat> so the long and short of it is, is uh, the evidence property specialist. We decided uh, that this is more of a budget issue down the road, the full-time versus part-time. So it's still staying at a part-time position 28 hours a week. And uh, we're going to try and entice uh, someone with a few more qualifications to come in at, at uh, this price range, which uh, we had done our due diligence and, and uh, answering the questions exactly what they do and what their responsibilities are in the job. And uh, Stephanie had put it through uh, that process and, and found out the comparable uh, rate is right around what's uh, proposed in this uh, to the union. Uh, I talked to the union, our union rep for the department, the union uh, and the uh, uh, Bonnie with the uh, CWA that works with them, and uh, she's uh, signed off on that. I don't know if your copy shows that on there, but I do have a copy of her signing that agreement, so 
everything's done besides the resolution to the council to approve that for the next two years and then they'll renegotiate that uh, when the contract is up in 2020 for the year 21. So the figures that you have in here, uh, the, the new numbers are for uh, effective July 1, 19, and then for 20? Yes. Do the, where, how, how do those compare to the animal control officer? Uh, they're just, with the animal control officer, I believe they're just a little bit under what the animal control officer makes uh, starting out and uh, their wage. So I think it's, I think the animal control officer starts out at 21 or, or something like that, I believe. So it's pretty close. It's pretty close, just a little lower. And we, we ran it through, he mentioned Stephanie looking at it, not only comparing to other cities for uh, similar job positions, but also yes. within our, uh, within the non-union structure and trying to look at based off of job responsibilities where it fit. And this pay range would match pretty, pretty comparably with where it would fit on a, within our non-union schedule as well. Yes, that's correct. Any other questions for the chief? Nope. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Okay, we have a public hearing set for August 19th. Uh, a is consideration of an application for multifamily rental unit production. Uh, new construction Bless program. You. Excuse me. Oh, thank you. Round six for the Tama Building site for the Iowa Economic Development Authority Community Development Block Grant Program. And then uh, B is consideration of a lease agreement with the Des Moines County Historical Society for the Hawkeye Log Cabin in Crapo Park. So we'll be talking about that here real soon. Uh, discussion items tonight, uh, treasurer's report. Annette? So the treasurer's report that's in the packet is very preliminary there is a lot of things that are gonna change. So I don't know how much you guys wanna talk about it because we're gonna be accruing stuff back through August. In this one, our transfers haven't been made yet. So it's just kind of more cash basis right now, what's happened on here. And we'll be accruing everything back. So again, and Jim hit on some of the projects that we're gonna be doing transfers between to get, to clean some of those up. Yeah, some of the some of the accounts, as an example, like Employee Benefits Fund shows the $1.1 million balance. That all gets transferred over to the general fund, which is sitting at a $700,000 deficit. So yeah. you've, we have some major transfers yeah. that happen that haven't been reflected in here. Some of them are already gone through our system, but. Like today, I looked at general fund. As of today, we have $2.6 million in there in cash, which you can't see that on here. <laughs> but there's also going to be expenditures that, because we're still doing accounts payable back towards that. So, I mean, this is very preliminary. Yeah, let's wait till we got some hard times. But you guys satisfied with preliminary numbers? That's fine. Sure. Yeah, outside of the fact that all those transfers haven't happened. I, Correct. We don't see any that are majorly out of line. No, I mean, like a big question I was, was our flood yeah. things and we know now we're getting insurance and all that stuff so yeah. I mean all that stuff's going to be coming through and some of it some of it will go back to this last year but some of it will go forward because we'll be doing the repairs then so again like vehicle maintenance probably all of our internal service funds they've all got a little ways to go because we're always a month behind timing wise same with all my grants I've went through and asked for reimbursements and you'll see those come through when we do our accounts receivable entry and put money back as we get it in. So, but there's nothing that's really out, I mean, that I've noticed so far that seems unusual or out of line with what we think is going to happen. Well, as we move forward, if you see any, uh, and if you see any boils or uh, something like that, make sure you let us know. We want to know. Yeah, so you're going to see the same treasurer's report change for the next few months. Right on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Annette. Uh, number two is a presentation, annual report of Tree Advisory Board, Scott Zeiser. Come on down. And the crew. Good evening. Good evening. Scott Zeiser um, from the Tree Advisory Council. We have some other members here. And Patrick is going to display one of the items I'm going to talk about. So some of the events in... The past year, we obviously hold our four quarterly meetings. Um, we worked on creating an educational training seminar for our licensed tree um, contractors this year, 
and the topic was proper pruning. Um, changes to the ordinance and to the tree license contract is what we're working on too. We hosted uh, two planning demonstrations, planted over 100 trees in the city right away. Um, these plantings will assist in the funding of the Trees Forever grant and partnership of, of Elite Alliant Energy. Um, we did start a wood utilization program, which is being promoted by U.S. Forestry Services, then the Iowa DNR. Um, we are one of, Burlington is one of five communities in the state um, testing this prog program. The program helps eliminate some of the lumber that would be dropped off in the landfill and less, and then consumed and then cut up into firewood and used by furniture for um, people that would need something like that. So our Arbor Jet system is going to treat all the remaining ash trees. Um, we are working on goals to establish educational programs with our new outdoor classroom signs, which is a sample right here. And uh, we had three people attend the Tree City USA lunch and received the 31 year Tree USA sticker. There were Patrick, Robert Walker, and Ryan Gorley. So, that is briefly what we did in the past year. If you have any questions, I can answer. We have Patrick, or city forester, who can answer. What or we have our other members. So, what is a tree water jet, and what's the science behind that? The science to interject in the cambium layer, basically, am I, am I correct, is to, so systemically, or, or systemic is root, but this is in the system, the mm -hmm. bark itself, so it goes up into mm -hmm. the system, so it wards off the emerald ash borer is what basically it does. So it, it attacks it, it poisons it, or doesn't like it, basically it's sending chemical into the tree. Hmm. So Any idea how many unaffected ash trees we have in our community? Uh, probably zero. Yeah. Zero. I, you may have a couple that are sending wild growth up at the trunk or halfway up the tree, but they're not a sustainable tree anymore, so they need to be cut down. It's a, it's a bad deal is what it is, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. I think we're good. All right. Hey, Thank Kirk, you. Patrick, yes. you're a rock star, my friend. We appreciate you. Thank it's a you room full much. of rock stars. Really. Yeah. Well said. Number three. Downtown Park. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Walker's causing trouble in the out in the yard. Uh, downtown parking. So we have a memo in the packet. Uh, our parking committee met uh, last week and discussed the uh, possible change from four to three hour parking. Uh, evaluated uh, the parking study and uh, had some discussions. Uh, within the um, memo in the packet, uh, the committee did not recommend the change to four to three at this time uh, based on some factors. Uh, one being uh, parking has not aggressively been promoted to date. Uh, we have created a parking brochure that's also in the packet, um, but uh, it's just been created in the last uh, few weeks and uh, has not been distributed. We're waiting, I guess, to see if uh, a change was going to be made or not. Um, before we put that out so that the current information would be out on that. Um, but I can show a copy. Just talking about the uh, parking lots available, um, better describing the signs that have been put up in the last uh, year um, to make uh, downtown businesses and uh, residents a little more aware of what the parking options are, what the costs are, um, fines, and then having a parking map that would direct individuals to the parking lots and then delineate what the two hour on Jefferson, the dark blue, and then whether it's the three hour uh, currently in the lighter blue, um, and then the gray being uh, no time limit parking. Um, so that hasn't, that'd be something that uh, could be distributed uh, here shortly. Just wanted to see if there's any changes before we move forward um, and try and get that in the, to every downtown business and uh, apartment building so that all individuals had copies of it and right. could really move forward with uh, promoting and being more aware of what the parking options are downtown. Um, other discussions were uh, parking ticketing has not changed substantially when the, from when the previous change was made from uh, two and three hour parking on side streets to four hour parking. Uh, so we're going back to that three hour uh, um, as one uh, concern whether that would really change the habits or not. Um, parking lot 
public parking lot spaces remain open and available for use and lease. Currently, uh, 48 we have a 48% lease rate. Uh, 143 spaces are leased out of 300 available uh, public spaces downtown. Uh, so uh, that'd be a, another reason for this brochure, trying to promote uh, lease parking. Um, are looking to do update the parking usage study. Uh, when we adopted our, uh, we're in the process of creating the parking study. We uh, did a, a snapshot view of uh, what's the actual usage rate of all the parking spaces downtown. How often do they turn over? How often are they empty? Right. And looking to do that here again in the next few weeks uh, through the use of a drone and uh, trying to map that with uh, the Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission uh, to really determine how many spaces are open throughout the day at different hours right of the on. day. Um, did look at other communities and uh, examining parking fines may have a greater impact on parking and lead to more parking public parking lot usage, uh, whether that's an increased or graduated fine system for repeat violators. Uh, also looked at some communities have a first offense waiver for visitors from out of town, so you're not discouraging those people that are new to the community, their first time downtown may not be familiar, um, but letting them know what the requirements are. Uh, recent flooding has had an impact on parking. We've had a major impact on parking downtown. Uh, it was a short-term impact, although it, didn't seem like it was short term while we're in it, but um, some of those short term issues can be addressed in different manners. Uh, we have upcoming upcoming flood wall work uh, to stabilize much of the riverfront parking needs during flood times. Um, did also talk about whether uh, to consider a flood time parking policy such that non lease spaces and public parking lots are free during uh, those periods of flooding that uh, displace people from the riverfront. Um, Jefferson would remain uh, two hour, I guess, under the current uh, assumption, uh, so wouldn't change Jefferson. And then we do have quite a bit of upcoming work with the Tiger Grant on Main and Jefferson and then Washington Street, uh, along with some planned new de developments, uh, Fifth and Valley at the Blaw Building uh, and the Tama Building that will have impacts on parking in downtown that could affect changes or lead to new thoughts as well. Um, so based on a lot of uh, factors, that was the general consensus of the parking committee is to um, maybe try and promote parking a little bit more in a different manner than uh, making a change from four to three hour at the at this time although uh, it might be something to consider more in the future um, but if it were to be changed if council did want to move forward with it just uh, for the information there's approximately 120 signs that would need to be updated most could utilize a new uh, sticker over the four going to the three um, while some would need to be completely updated. Uh, from public works standpoint, it would be approximately 60 to 80 hours of labor, um, and it would probably be around November that that could be implemented unless it was set as a higher priority or over some of their other work with the flood work and other projects that they're behind on. That uh, That's the time frame to, that if it were approved that that probably could be implemented. Council. How do, how do we indicate to the public when the blue and orange the the daily lease spots are open for lease is there i mean we don't have anything on on the the sign itself right that says this is available for lease e do they each individual space has a blue or orange tag on it but how does it say whether it's leased or not so someone driving through the parking lot if it's if it has a blue says, or orange it is leased it is leased. yeah okay so yeah. if it doesn't have that then it doesn't have it if it's green then it's out open hourly parking for but anyone. if it's a blue or orange one it's leased and yep. so if somebody wants to lease one then you change it from blue to orange someone wants and, and I could, we could change it from blue to orange or, or go from green to blue or That's we could change it around we okay. try and keep them grouped together but what the color it is is what it its current okay. use is. I just didn't know how we were indicating that to people. Yeah. Like when they drive through the parking lot, they, they live downtown or they have a mm -hmm. business. Boy, I'd really like to have that spot. Mm -hmm. They can approach the city and convert one of those from green to blue and orange. They could convert a green to a reserved one. A current blue or orange one is currently leased, so. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying, yep. they can convert it. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is, there's, is there any way to promote that on our website, how many open spots we have? Yeah, we started to update our website with this uh, brochure. Um, <coughs> on the brochure, uh, I guess if you go to burlingtoniowa.org and search downtown parking, we have a specific web page. Um, that's one goal of the committee is to get more information on that, including this brochure. And then uh, Annette has, we have a count of actual leased and open spaces in each lot. 
And if they want to lease a space in that lot, they can contact Annette to do so. Okay. One, one of the issues that, in, in, uh, sorry, Matt, uh, yeah. just to get on with what John's asking about, uh, one of the issues that we probably have for getting what the kind of information out in a timely manner that you would like, uh, our reservation system right now is an Excel spreadsheet for tr uh, that Annette uses to track all the different spots that are that are used. We don't have a, a nice, we don't have a software system that's set up that can that we could plug in the the uh, lots, the lots and, spots. And, and then you could track what's open and available that way. And I think you guys have done some <coughs> looks at some different software programs that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where they fit within the flexibility to do some of those things, but what kind of cost are you looking at to? It, well, it, it's varied from depending a few thousand dollars annually to ten, twelve thousand dollars for new software. Well, and you're probably more in that ten thousand sure. annual range yeah. to do what you're asking yeah. for. Well, what I'm what I'm saying though, suffice to say that if it's a city-owned lot, the spot is available for lease. Right. Yes. So I mean, we, if if you wanted to lease that spot, you can come to the city, say, "Hey, I'd like to look at leasing that." Yeah. Ideal situation would be that we would have a have something on that was that was a little bit more up to date mm -hmm. on that you could link onto and 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 see where where would spots be available, how many might be available to do. Yes. Yeah, please. Probably. So when we did all the parking lots, I grouped all the leased spots together by time. So 24 sevens are together in a lot. 7:30 to 5 is Monday through Friday in a lot, and all the open ones are together. So that when you drive into a lot, you can actually go down a row and say everything on this right hand side is daily or hourly. So the only problem with putting it out there for the whole for everybody to see, which is not a big deal is they're going to pick spots right smack in the middle and we're going to say nope I don't want to do that because I want to keep them grouped together as much as possible but so it would be within the lot itself. it would be within the lot itself because people call me now and I'll say do you, are you looking for 24 7 or 7 30 to 5 and then I'll say these are the spaces I have available you can check them out get back to me or I can just pick one and assign it to you and that's the way I do it now so I can keep because my idea was when you drive into a lot if you're hourly looking for a spot they should be all together, make it easy for somebody mm -hmm. coming in to find a spot. And it's not like the lots themselves are ginormous where you have to, you know, you're picking the spot over here because it's closer. Right. It's going to be one, two, so like maybe three a good example over. is the lower ramp. When you come in off of Main Street, on the right-hand side, there's like 12 spots, I think, that are hourly or daily and as you come in. And then when you exit out, when you get towards Main Street, yeah. there's another block of, I don't know if there's 10 there or 12 there, that are all hourly also. So, because you know in the winter time people are looking for covered spots. I mean, it's great if somebody wants to lease all of them and they're all leased all the time. Right. But for my purposes, I try to keep them all together and that's what I do in every lot right now. Because I think that's better for no, that's groovy. the people driving through them. What were you going to ask? So, I, I, I think we've just done a terrible job of managing this whole situation the last couple of years. I think we've made it extremely complicated. I think any person that comes into any community is not likely to get on our website and check our parking policies prior to doing so. Nobody, unless you have consistently worked on the parking policy or work or live downtown and have read the handbook, uh, is going to be 100% familiar with how this operation works. I think we, we just, simpler is better. Um, I don't want people to have to pay for parking that want to shop downtown, so we need to have a large contingent of our street parking that's free. I called a dozen or emailed a dozen different uh, business owners that I know downtown um, that work downtown every day, and every single one of them said that they would rather have a three-hour parking versus a two or a four. Um, and um, I think there's a better way to go about doing this um, versus having uh, green spots and blue spots and orange spots so that when somebody pulls into a parking lot they know whether or not they can park there or not so it if you if you look at other parking organizations um, I would prefer it 
be where we sell a tag, put it in the window of the car, the person driving by can see it, they don't have to get out and check license plates. Um, and then that, that sticker, you know, if, if, we, if somebody wants to buy a 24-7 tag, then they can buy it, and then the person checking tags will just know that that orange tag means that that car can be there 24-7. Uh, if it's a blue tag, then it's only allowed to be in the parking lot and, and get away from designated parking spaces and just go with a parking lot designation. So if you want to, if you want to, if you want to buy a tag to be able to park in a lot and not have to worry about moving your car every three hours, just sell them a blue tag, and that blue tag says that they have to park in that parking lot. So when the parking meter lady pulls in, she just drives she through. She does not currently go through the lots that have, I mean, the lease spaces. She does not monitor those. That is up to whoever's leasing it. So if somebody parks in your space, it's your. You can have them towed. Or you can leave them a nice little note telling them that yep. you're letting them go by this time. But she doesn't monitor those spots right now. No, I, I understand. I, I still think we've just made it extremely complicated. Uh, and anybody that doesn't regularly come to downtown, uh, if they're going to try and pull into a lot, is likely to, to probably do something that they're not supposed to just because they don't understand the rules, the regulations, or when or where they're supposed to park. So that's my, my two cents. As far as what we do, we, we just did these signs. I think we should be committed to those signs until the Tiger process has worked its way through and we determine what we're going to do to the parking lots. In the immediate future, I'd like to see us adjust the side streets and Jefferson Street to three-hour parking and, and leave it at that. I, was, I had a quick question. Um, on the reserved spots, it has the number and then this color coded does the color coded part have what it is as well i thought it did yeah, yeah. I think it does, so right? all you have to do is look at the tag mm -hmm. and it'll say it's this is it's orange color and it's reserved 24 7. i don't consider myself the sign i mean that was the whole idea of putting these big signs up was to try to explain to them before they went in the parking lot look for these places <clears throat> and the signs are re those lots are really for the residents and employees of downtown so you know the, the problem is always going to be human nature right mm -hmm. human nature is I'm going to park right in front of whether I work there or shop there I dealt with that for 35 years I try to pay my guys extra money to park a block away and they wouldn't and you see it all the time where em employees are parking right in front of the business they work at so and that's human nature but the lots are really f designed for employees and overnight residents versus out of town shoppers. Because right. that's why we have the limits that we do. And I think that's one of the nice things about the 24 7 and having designated spots is people that live downtown, they want to know I'm going to be able to pull in this lot, this is my right. spot. And no matter if I come or go, whenever I come and go, that spot's always going to be there. So, where if you go to a tag system and they got to drive around and look for a spot, that's we more difficult for them. And they're living down here. I mean, they're. I guess that's my thing. That's I mean, because once there was a there was a conversation about making all the lots like that, and I don't know about anybody else, but if I lived in one of the buildings, I wouldn't want to park three parking lots away if I went to the grocery store or you know shopping and have to carry my stuff all that far when I'm paying to park. Mm -hmm. I, just, I don't think it's a perfect system, but um, when you don't have money just to throw around and you've already got a system in place. You just can't go around overhauling stuff, so it's it's just trying to work and whittle away. And I, I, I think we should continue to look at it, but um, I'm satisfied I'm, and I'm ready to move forward. Out of the out of the where this was coming from, parking study was done two years ago. Um, the three-hour discussion was one that came up with council in the spring, and the council was interested in switching over to. The, the four hours down to three hours and being consistent on everything but Jefferson Street. Um, but asked for some input from this group. This, okay. in, this group is suggesting that they think that you should wait on that and be patient. Uh, however, the council was interested in doing that switch. Do you want to move forward and make that switch or not? I, I'd like to see us say parking lots alone, like I said. Well, this isn't parking and then, lots. And this is a side three hour side street change. And the, the only reason for the the only reason I would like to see a switch from the four to three is to try to encourage those employees. We have spots, and those employees, and to to go lease a spot. 
because at four hours, uh, the, the fact of the matter is for most of most employees downtown, they come in, they go to lunch, they come back, and they're the four hours covers. It. Three hours would encourage a little bit different. I think the only other thing we could do that I would be interested in is the repeat offenders. We need to have a graduated scale for the repeat offenders because there are there are some that they get a parking ticket daily and that's their parking plan. Right? They, yep. they get a parking ticket daily and that's their parking, that's how they're paying for their lease spot. And I think we need to have a, a, a graduated system. I, I, I do like that. But I'm, I'm saying I'm satisfied with, uh, with, uh, um, with staff. If, uh, if they don't want to rush into it, then all right. You know, um, if, if they want to do it right away, then, then all right. We already have the understanding that we're eventually going to go to three hours. We already, we already covered that. So I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine if, if staff thinks it's best that we don't rush into it. Well, I trust staff on that. I'm, that's where I'm saying I'm groovy. Where, where you yeah, I, I am as well. I know only because we asked, we have this committee. We all asked them what they thought they're telling us. And I don't think it's right for us to say, well, we don't like what you just said, so we're going to do what we want anyway. You kind of expressed a 2 2 split here. Uh, yep. Linda isn't available. I don't know mm -hmm. if anyone has gotten any impression from her on whether she I, would like to see this change or not. I talked to Linda, but I, I last I think, time we discussed it, she was four or three I hour, think I, I think I'd rather that could wait to see if she's Would you like us to bring down, forward a resolution I based would. off of this discussion, bring forward a resolution authorizing the change from the two to the three hours for those streets? I would, and then we can vote on it next Friday or next, next it, Monday. It may not be next <laughs> Monday. It may be, be the, <laughs> it may be the meeting after that. Sure, that it that's comes, fine. Well, that, Jim, on that resolution, or so, or what, that's just going to be for the just hour for the, switch. It's not going to be for a fines or right. anything else. That's something That'll we're still going to work discussion on. on. Okay. Because I, I think what they need to kind of do is look at what other communities are doing for gradu graduated fines. Right, and see. because we have a lot of repeat yeah. offenders that get tickets over and over. So that's, 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 that's going to discourage. Their lease plan. It's, it is exactly, and it's yeah. the hopes to get, get them to pricey. go to parking lots. It's pricey, but that's what they're doing. They'd be smarter to go lease a spot. So. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. okay. Are, we, are we good then? Yeah, yeah, I think we vote on it. Okay. okay. Jim, you got that covered. Okay. okay. Uh, number four is our canine program. Chief Kramer. I've already been threatened back there to keep this short so we get out of here, but. Who wasn't? Uh, who wasn't? <clears throat> Nick? Point of Who wasn't? Who is it? Nick? We know who it was. <laughs> 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 And that ran you out. <laughs> I know it wasn't Chief Trexel. No, no. <laughs> it might have been, but um, a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, I came to you and, and talked to you and updated you about uh, Asta, our canine, and we took her down to uh, Canine Working Dogs International in Florida to have her number one kenneled until we can get somebody trained uh, to, uh, I guess, be her handler. And uh, he was also going to do some checking on uh, her condition. Uh, with her uh, pancreas and and trying to figure out uh, if there's something else that they could do he's he called me about a week or so ago with a proposal he said he, he's willing to uh, purchase the dog back uh, for a fee her health has improved she's gained weight uh, so she's progressing along and and uh, would uh, be able to come back and work with that being said she also had her was going to have her fifth birthday here in august so uh, the, the viability of her working is probably to the age of seven. Uh, with that, also, uh, the uh, supplement that she was taking is $240 a month, somewhere around there. He looked for a cheaper uh, supplement for us, and he said the, the, about the cheapest he's going to get is, is a generic brand that's around $200. So anyway, you cut the pie, it's between $200 and $250 a month additional expense uh, uh, to uh, keep her on duty. Uh, the proposal he sent to me would uh, give us a refund, or not a refund, but a uh, exchange or a warranty price uh, for Asta. Uh, he also, by contract, when we bought her, has what's called the first right of refusal. Uh, with that, he would have to refuse to purchase her back in order for us as the city to sell her to someone else. Uh, so with that being said, he's willing to purchase her back and whatever agreement he makes with with someone else would be uh, his agreement, not ours. Uh, so uh, with that price uh, that he said, that, that I want to back up just a minute, that 
the cost for training a new handler was around $4,800 uh, to train a new handler. That training is available October 1st through 11th on site at his facility. And also the original contract uh, for her to be down there until October was about $2,300. Uh, with that being said, the agreement he has sent me to buy her back, uh, that it, of course reduces the amount of uh, kindling that needs to be done, brings it down to about $950 to $1,000 uh, for that cost, which we have uh, would keep her there uh, until the sale. Uh, the price of about $4,800 for the training for the handler is still there, and then the cost of, to uh, purchase a new dog uh, with the rebate or the uh, warranty would be about uh, $2,350. There's also a uh, shipping charge on there of $1,240 to get a, a new dog to the facility and for us to get a new dog between one and a half and two years old. With that being said, to get a younger dog uh, with longer sustainability uh, to work for the Burlington Police Department uh, would cost us uh, about $9,300. That's all in, all done uh, with the training. We already have the vehicle, that equipment's there, so uh, the cost to uh, bring a new canine in would be about that nine, just a shade over $9,300. What's the cost if we were to get someone trained and, and uh, keep ASTA? Uh, the cost for that is just minus, uh, well, we'd have to keep her there, so that cost would be about uh, the $2,310 uh, for kindling her and then uh, the, about the $4,800, so you're talking a little over $7,500. And so, a shipping charge, right? There's no shipping charge for ASTA. This okay. would be for a new dog, the shipping so, charge. So your cost is a, a couple of thousand dollars to get an ex extended three new, years. But, but what you're getting, so it's a value-wise going with a new dog with a new handler having the that dog available for the full five years is worth an awful lot more mm -hmm. however when you, you originally did the program with asta you're looking at covering the majority of the, of the five-year cost for that dog with the funds that were donated and this will go well beyond you're, you're now committing yourself to funds that are beyond what was donated to cover this dog how much more uh, I just, over I five just, years. Yeah, the the cost this ninety three thirty one will will cost the city nothing. That's still from uh, the donated funds out of the account that we have from when we purchased ASTA or did the fundraising effort then. Right. So we still have the funds available for that, but that will be reduced down to uh, in that account probably to sustain a one year overtime rate for the handler. We have to pay the the handler. Uh, for taking care of the dog and the training away from work. We pay them uh, eight hours of overtime every two weeks, so 16 hours a month, which amounts to, uh, I think every six months, about 5000 yeah. or somewhere around $10,000 a year. There's sustainable funds in that account probably through, and I'm just estimating through October of uh, next year, potentially, if, if, this, if I agree to this deal in October of this year. So over the course of having the, that next dog, it would be about four years worth of overtime. Main, of maintenance overtime of that, maintenance. and that's going to be forty-five thousand dollars over for four that's, years, yeah, give still or take. Pretty cheap for an officer. I was going to say, I don't know how you can say no to that. I mean, to be able to extend the life uh, of or the the working life of our canine. Um, that, yeah, that's of that a, program. That's yeah. a no. That's a no brainer. Because if I kept Asta, then I would have to come to you for the cost mm -hmm. uh, in a in a year or two to say, hey, you know, I want to purchase a new dog at full price, and it would probably be somewhere around. I'm going to guess to make probably around twelve to fourteen thousand dollars, just for the dog. Yeah, not 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 accounting for the handler. I mean, you've given us presentations that have shown us that. That, that ASA has done a remarkable job of taking drugs off the street and uh, reinforcing your mission in law enforcement in our community. I don't know how we can not have a canine dog in the community. So, and to be able to extend the, the working life of, of and getting a new dog, I think it's totally worth it. I think the city overall is getting a pretty good deal when we talk about the funds that were raised uh, for uh, the start of this program that, uh, through that, fundraising. There you go. Talk, um, friend, and right then. We can, we can sustain this program for an additional five years at a cost very minimal to the city of an overtime rate. Uh, of course, it'll show up in my uh, line item in the budget every year, and it'll just earmark that 
ten or eleven thousand dollars for the canine that we'll have to budget maybe, for. Maybe we can have a little uh, a little party for the for the new dog and a little fundraiser to uh, to raise a little bit more money for uh, for the new dog as well. You know, I'm going to say this, but there are uh, there is a, a great amount of support in this community for that canine program. I just don't talk a lot about it, yet, but people do contact me regularly about uh, supporting that program and, and enjoy it so and that, like I said in the end that's it's really cheap for an additional officer but the cost you're looking at there so and, uh, right now I'm I, all for it I don't need the council's approval for the going with this agreement because we have the donated funds that go through the foundation so um, I, but I just wanted to run it past you so you know where I'm thinking about going I've talked to the uh, foundation board and uh, they also had the same sentiment that it's a, it's a pretty good deal. So uh, I'll probably just move forward with that. And, and uh, just so that you're aware, you know, come about this October of, of uh, 20, right you know, that, that may be an expense with the overtime that's there. We plan to deplete those funds in the foundation uh, before, you know, asking for that. So okay. right do you have an officer in mind or I, one that? I got six or seven. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that, so how that is I, that gonna how's that gonna work? Do you know that, yet how you're gonna? I would probably well make it just. I'm, I'm gonna do an interview process okay. with them and and look for the person that's most Very viable good. and has the best interest in it. Very good. All right. Okay. You guys good? Sounds Any other great. Questions? Any other good. questions? No. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, Chief. Chief. Okay, that brings us to number five appointments. Uh, who do we got? MPT. It uh, looks like we have for the Animal Hearing Board, uh, Belinda McCampbell is requested interest to uh, be reappointed again to a new term. And then for the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, Judy Stevens, right? Yes, Judy Stevens, who has expressed an additional term as well. All right, well, we appreciate that. Yes. Let's, uh, we've come to a close, everybody. Mr. Tislin, any closing remarks? Uh, we're trying to finalize the Tiger Grant public input sessions, um, looking at uh, August 13th, 14th, and 15th that our uh, consultants will be here and um, having meetings over those three days. Uh, and we're hopefully tomorrow or Wednesday get out the information on that. But looking at the uh, just general public <coughs> input meeting on Tuesday, August 13th at uh, 6 o'clock here at City Hall, um, and having a stakeholder meeting on the riverfront that first day and then uh, the second day have uh, stakeholder meetings uh, for Jefferson and Main Street throughout the day um, and then kind of day three is a wrap up. Uh, they are looking to come back to council in early September to give a presentation on kind of uh, their findings and get uh, move forward from that point but I uh, did want to let, let you know uh, Tuesday August 13th uh, at 6 would be the public input meeting here at City Hall and uh, there'll be stakeholder meetings throughout those three days, and we'll get the final uh, schedule out once we get that nailed down. But um, again, looking at Riverfront input on uh, that 13th, and then uh, the Jefferson and Main Street uh, input on the 14th, and then kind of wrap up on the 15th. All right. Councilor? Uh, just a good job by all on Rag Bry. It came out pretty pretty well. I had its little bumps and like everything does. I had one of the coolest moments happen in my life. That was, uh, that was, which I told you about, that was really cool. So good job by the community and all the volunteers once again. I just want to thank uh, CERT and uh, did you want to say something Chief? I have to give a shout out to the major of the police department, Major Grimshaw. See, I was getting ready to say something first. You just had to beat me up. Go I ahead. did. Um, um, I uh, initially, when they came to me, the, the partnership came to me and asked for someone to, to head that up. And uh, from that part, I thought of him immediately. He has an enormous amount of contacts, organization skills, and just the effort he put into that uh, this weekend is phenomenal. Uh, along with him, uh, Lieutenant Wayne Thompson was also instrumental in setting up the route and getting that uh, coordinated with the help of uh, Nick McGregor and his uh, his partners out there at the streets department. So it was a group effort. And I will, I just wanted to reiterate because Major Grimshaw asked me that, you know, it went off uh, pretty well. You know, it's just like mm -hmm. the little things that, that could have been a little bit better, but no major incidents. Our night shift uh, patrol guys had uh, zero issues with, with the folks that were here in town visiting us. And, and uh, there was a, a few little things that they were able to negotiate and make sure that they went off with, without uh, anybody going to jail. So 
but we expect that in our daily business. So um, with that being said, it was a, a phenomenal event from their standpoint Sweet. too, and we had a lot of dedication uh, down at our department. And like I said, along with uh, Public Works and the people that uh, Major Grimshaw had asked to help out and participate and volunteer. So a big shout out to him. Right on, absolutely. I just want to reiterate that. Uh, I was getting ready to go there to uh, staff, to the uh, uh, CERT team that, that uh, uh, helped uh, direct traffic, to uh, Nick McGregor and staff. Um, it was, uh, I just thought it was awesome. I, th I thought uh, every aspect of it was, uh, I thought it turned out, everything that I could say, I thought it turned out great. And again, I'm sure there were some little hiccups, but even the hiccups got handled. Uh, so um, good job, good job. And I, I just can't see how it could have gone uh, any smoother for our first uh, for our first round at that. So uh, I just thought I thought we shined. MPT. Um, just sorry that I had to miss the the great event. I was on my way back to Burlington on Saturday. So welcome back to America. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it didn't. It looked like nothing was like here. Yeah. All I noticed were the green. Directional arrows on the uh, on the road. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's it. Thank you. Didn't catch any porta potties. Well, there are few. Oh, there's uh, <laughs> there. Yeah, there that, was, that was there. There was a lot. There was a lot. <laughs> Counselor. Um, uh, good to be back in town. Welcome back to America. Um, I, I went to some meetings on Thursday. Had the opportunity to go to Washington D.C. to represent the city. Um, was invited out there by the National Association of Counties. Um, great lineup of speakers. Had an opportunity to uh, listen to the Vice President, um, the uh, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of the Interior, Director of DHS, um, uh, Director of Homeland Security, um, and uh, I was actually invited into the Oval Office to meet with the President, which was extremely humbling. Um, and uh, so, uh, talked a lot about FEMA and, and talked a lot about uh, a little bit about policy and, and got a lot of great updates. So um, there's a lot of things coming down the pipeline. As long as they get here, we should be good to go. James, so three of us were out of out of country last week, but we were not together. Right. <laughs> um, Nick, did you have anything? Um, okay. Highway 61. We'll be doing an open house for DOT is doing an open house for I, Highway 61. It's you know up in the with the bypass. It's really about land out out around in the Minneapolis area. But that's Wednesday 4:30 to 6 ish. Um, I think that's at the middle school up there. Though if you want to get the exact location and I'm verified with me, I can get find the email because I haven't looked at that in two weeks. Um, the only other, th well, we've been working, we've continued to work with Dustin and VNK uh, with the integrated plan uh, for st sewer separation work and, and where we tr try to prioritize uh, that with other sewer system needs. Um, just, we've had some, some general discussions and we'll continue to have a little bit more specific discussions and. I would say that that's probably something that's going to be another month or two before we really have a great definitive idea where we're headed with that, uh, how well they take our approach. I think we'll, over the course of the next two weeks, we'll get a little bit better idea um, how accepting they are and how much mo for make modification we want to see. The great room in the bathroom. I don't know why they call it a powder room. Um, <clears throat> the port building is all but cleaned up. There's some drywall that has to be stripped or replaced. Um, but the Welcome Center, people I've called and said that they can get back in there and start doing some things there. The Iowa store has been cleaned out. Uh, that it was in a state um, issues there. Uh, the auditorium has been started. Uh, Surf Pro, I think, started last Wednesday. Tuesday. And they got their big air scrubber in there, so they shouldn't take too long. Uh, they did find some asbestos that had been covered up from previous uh, flood work, so pretty well cleaned up. Uh, we uh, we hauled all that out to the landfill. I don't. I haven't seen a final bill for the materials hauled out there. But um, otherwise, I don't know if there was something yeah, else. Yeah, I talked with with uh, Serve Pro, and I know, and then also Braden. Um, they were hoping that they'd have a majority of their work done by the end of next week. Now the asbestos is not something that they'd get done in that kind of time frame. Um, 
they have another room that may have asbestos in it. The banquet doing, room, and they haven't heard positive yet whether yeah. or not it is or not. So we may have some additional work there, but that's gonna, that's likely another to get with it, the notification process to DNR and uh, then getting a contractor in to do it. You're a, a good, you're more than a month out to getting that, I think, completely wrapped up. But we, it's looking like the auditorium itself not being done, but at least to where some of the events that are scheduled in there this fall should be okay by mid mid September for some. It, base it should be safe to, to go in there, there for them to be able to rehab that floor. You know, for our staff to go back in there and rehab the floor a little enough to lay it down um, and be able to have some of those events going. Yeah, it sounds like Civic Music has moved one of their events yeah. to the end. They of moved the, the Texas Tenors to the end of the show. Yeah. Um, I talked to Barb McRoberts about it. But so it looks like we should be on on pace for them to be able to use the facility for the October. next next event that's scheduled. Are we scheduled saving in the existing arena floor? I mean, for now, for we're, we're going to get it laid down. Okay. There's, if you were to go in, I mean, looking in there, there's one section that's heaved. and It's in the southwest corner right yeah. next by the stage yep. and that's one that they you i don't i think that you can probably get away with having an event there have that area cordoned off even before you get that taken care of but it's one that okay. it's not one that compromises the whole floor mm. but we need the air scrubber in there to be able to suck some of the humidity out and get before. the you know the the air conditioning rolling in there but that's a short-term fix that we'll do yeah. with that okay. what do we figure out what was going on with the boiler it's it's shot. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a separate the the boiler you have. Uh, That'll be out on. separate. And I think maybe next Monday you may have uh, an added item.